What was your I don't get paid enough for this moment at work? Worked at a fast food place about 13 years ago. This lady in the drive-thru claimed she was missing a sandwich. Our policy was to ask for the bags back to verify. I asked to see the bags, three or four, decent sized order, and instead of handing them back like a civilized human being, she instantly started raging and throwing the food into the window while cussing me out. Guess what one of the items that she threw at me was? Yep, the missing sandwich. She may have missed a sandwich, but she didn't miss her shot. Story 2. We used to be paid half salary to attend seminars related to our industry that grant professional development hours. These seminars would often be at 7 a.m. at a hotel that was about a two-hour drive for me, if I was lucky, in rush hour traffic to get to. But hey, it was paid and had free breakfast, so waking up at 4.30 to attend wasn't the worst thing in the world. The company announced that they believed attending the seminars was furthering our knowledge, therefore helping the company, and therefore helping us. So we would no longer be paid to attend them, but were still expected to go? I just said screw that and haven't attended a single one since then and delete all the invite emails. I'm paid hourly, so taking the six hours out of my day to drive and attend a seminar I am not being paid for is just plain stupid. I was asked why I haven't gone to any and told them I have a mortgage to pay. Haven't been asked to go again since. Edit. Holy crap my inbox. Wanted to throw a few comments out because I've been bombarded. 1. I believe the above situation arose when the company realized the licensed PEs were required to attend the seminars for development hours regardless, so they could get away with not paying. The company threw out that BS line to try and guilt us into going, but those of us who are not required to get the hours can't be forced to go. 2. I have already told them, as I mentioned above, that I have a mortgage to pay and am not going to attend anything without pay. I have not been reprimanded for it because as many of you have pointed out, that would be illegal and they know it. I am, quite literally, not getting paid enough to deal with this. Story 3 This was back in the late 90s. I was working at a Walmart as my first job as a teenager. I was floated to the garden department one day and there was a guy looking at lawn fertilizer. I walked over and asked if he needs help. He said, Not now, just looking at the different kinds you have. Pretty standard reply from the guy, so I said, Okay, let me know. I walk away and then swing back about five minutes later. Same guy has proceeded to rip open about 10 different kinds of the fertilizer all over the ground and is rolling around in the stuff. He is also taste sampling it. I called my manager because I did not want to deal with it. Security escorted the guy out of the store and called an ambulance in case of the ingestion of the fertilizer may hurt him. Well, that's quite the diet he's got. Maybe he's trying the detox, he should try weed killer. Story 4. The time I went to sleep under my desk at work at 5 a.m. because I needed to be back at my desk for an 8 a.m. call. I had promised myself a long time ago that I would never sleep under my desk. I would go home or just work straight through, but I wouldn't do that. I only lived a 12-minute walk home, but that night I realized that getting those extra 24 minutes of sleep were worth not going home. I was so sad about it. I am a corporate lawyer. We had been working, literally, around the clock for days on a deal that was going sideways. This was a Wednesday slash Thursday morning, but I had been there until 3 a.m. Sunday night, 5 a.m. Monday night, 6 a.m. Tuesday night, and had been back in the office by 9 a.m. every day. That's when I knew I needed to quit, but I'm still here a year and some change later. Oops. If only you knew someone that could sue the company for those kinds of hours. Story 5 I worked in SROs in the middle of the roughest part of my city. I frequently have to identify drug dealers, report them, get them banned, and then enforce the ban. I get threatened by them a lot, usually just with fists or knives. I don't mind that so much. If they come at me with a knife, then the cops actually bust them, and then they're out of my hair for good. Well, one guy just kind of laughed at me and said I'd regret it if I kept getting in his way. Which people say, though usually more aggressively, and I don't put much stock into it. Then he gave me his name and just told me to Google him. Turns out, he's the son of one of the more violent crime families in the area. They're connected to like 40 targeted killings, and a lot of them are guys like me getting gunned down in parking lots. At that point, I backed off. 20 bucks an hour is not enough to fight the freaking mob. Hey, how you doing? You get in my way again, I'm gonna turn your face into spaghetti. Story 6. An old man rushed inside our store, literally running to the bathroom, but still managed to crap himself and all over the floor before he could make it, right in the most open, spacious part of the store. Edit. Wow, this is my most popular response ever. I don't know if I'm excited or disappointed. To add further detail, this was at a combination Circle K slash Subway store. I work at the Subway side, so it was one of the Circle K employees that actually cleaned it. And what I meant about it being out in the open was that we're the busiest store in our district. So even with a pile of crap on the ground, we've got people still trying to come in and out, and it's very visible. And it took a little while for my friend on the Circle K side to actually get the clean.
cleaning supplies together. So a good chunk of people came in, saw the crap, shrugged it off, and still got their pack of cigarettes. Or saw the crap, did a double take, and just went right back out the door. And we're in a big retirement area. So this kind of thing actually happens often, though most times it's mainly something that happens in the bathroom itself. And this was before they had the gas station food. Story 7. I was one of 50 or so 12 to 17 year olds working on this farm harvesting tobacco. Most of the kids were illegal, but I was just 17 and homeless and couldn't get a job because I didn't have an ID or any paperwork. I'd started hanging out with the Hispanics because they were the ones who got under the table jobs. We got there at 6, lunch at 1, leave at night. It's summer and it's the heat of the day a couple hours after lunch and this young girl, not more than 14, working alongside me suddenly passes out and will not wake up. I called for help and one of the guys watching over us walked over all slow and unconcerned. Can you wake her up? I said I couldn't. All right, let's bring her to the house. I picked her up and carried her there. He had me set her down by a tree in the shade and then disappeared into the house. I didn't know what to do and I'm panicking so I pour water on her forehead and take off her long sleeves. You have to cover every part of your skin when working with that much tobacco or else you'll get sick. A few minutes pass. She's breathing rapidly and shallowly and I'm still freaking out. So I yelled at this other guy who's supervising us and he just says, Did someone call an ambulance? I said no. Crap. So he calls the ambulance and then comes over and basically just watches me as I try to cool this girl down. As soon as they get there, all the supervisors tell me to go back to work and I don't get to talk to the EMTs. I never saw them ask any of the other Hispanic kids for her name or anything. I don't know if she came there alone or they just didn't notice. My supervisor later told me the EMT said she was having a serious heat stroke. Never heard how she turned out. I just went back to work. It was pretty good money compared to what I was used to. They used to make us leave our water jugs by the barn because they thought we slowed down too much with all our hydration, allowing us about 10 minutes every two hours to drink up. We had to wear hot, long sleeves and gloves and jeans. I remember drinking so much water I threw up, then drinking more because I just lost it all. That really taught me how much a hat helps you when you're in the sun all day. There were thousands of acres that all needed to be harvested and put up in less than two weeks. We did it in a little more than four days. Payment was 50 bucks a day, and that's the hardest I ever worked. Life isn't worth living if you work that hard. Those Hispanic kids, though, they were insane. Never saw them complain. They'd just sing and joke if they said anything. That girl was dead silent till the heat stroke. I still remember that. I don't know if places like that are still around, but they shouldn't be. Story 8. I worked at a Toyota service department for a few months. It was terrible in general, but one day was the worst. During the week, I had a nail go straight through my foot, so I'm bandaged up and have to walk around to get everything. Probably 100 yards to the car wash, 40 yards to the shop, etc. My team for Saturday, four people, had one person quit on Wednesday, and one person had a funeral to leave early for. The other guy was new, so he was slow to get stuff done. My boss says he'll come in and help. Wednesday, we lock it at 60 appointments, since we have a short staff up front and back. We do take walk-ins too. Thursday, it's at 80, and we tell our boss to lock it. Again on Friday, before closing, we see 110 appointments. He never locked it. Come Saturday morning, we had 130 appointments from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'm having to walk around a lot and ended up bleeding through three pairs of socks and bandages. I had to chase down about 80% of our customers' cars because our porters were goofing off. I had 53 open tickets at 12 p.m. We had a four-hour wait for walk-ins and two with appointments. Haven't had lunch or a snack since they banned food and drinks at our desks. My friend is about to leave for the funeral, so I cover his work. And my boss leaves for lunch, throwing his 20-ish tickets on my desk. So now I'm 110 tickets deep, helping the new guy with stuff, moving cars, and trying not to pass out. Oh, did I mention it's 95 degrees outside? No AC in our covered area, not inside, with 90% humidity, we didn't even get a breeze. Can't have snacks or drinks at our desks either. It gets to 3 p.m., and I'm rescheduling people, trying to get everyone out when their new cars are done, but have to limp them down to pull them in front to leave after they pay. My boss still isn't back, and the new guy quits. I end up getting in one car, and my blood from my sock drips onto our paper mats in the car. I cleaned everything out, vacuumed the car, washed it, and pulled it up, Customer went crazy that she saw blood on the disposable paper mat, about the weight, not getting a discount for her non-appointment service, and demanded to speak to my manager. That was it. Called him up and sent a voicemail. I explained it to his mailbox, then called the GM to explain that I've been alone for about three hours dealing with an uncapped amount of customers. Five technicians walked out, I'm still not recovered from my workplace injury, and that I'm finishing my paperwork to take my lunch break at 4 p.m. Boss shows up when I'm about to leave to eat my lunch I brought, knowing their provided lunch would be gone before I could set foot in the break room. He told me that in our state, I'm not legally allowed to have a lunch break during a shift, and I have to stay to finish out the customers on my ticket. 
I mentioned being here since 6 a.m., pre-printing everything, saying, I just need to relax. And he said, you didn't even clock in this morning. So unless you do what I say, you aren't getting paid. Service advisors are paid commission here and percentage of parts profit for sold stuff. I don't even get 10 cents an hour. So I walked to my station, removed all of everyone's login copies of my permissions, deleted all of my notes, deleted all of my warranty macros, all the spreadsheets, and reset every custom line I added to our program before I removed my admin permissions. Walked out and got a call when I got to my car asking, why isn't your login able to collect credit cards? So he had to either write down credit card info, take cash and checks, or let them go. My GM asked me to come back at a pay raise in less hours, but I knew it was BS. My boss ended up getting let go the following month, since he couldn't get things back up to speed. My good friend moved to Mercedes parts, so he's happy. I ended up going to BMW for a bit after that, and handled a few other franchises later. Holy crap, this guy went through a lot, I'm surprised he didn't quit sooner. Now you know what they say about selling cars, you're really living in the fast lane. Story 9 I was working late, like 2am in the office. My manager said, let's go to the convenience store to buy some snacks and smokes. She sits in the back and we drive there. After we get our stuff, she says, can we swing by this street intersection real quick? When we get to that intersection, I guess she sees a car that belongs to someone she knows, parked in front of her boyfriend's house. She starts to wail, cry, and kick around in the back seat, while my bewildered self just holds the steering wheel with a stupid look on my face. After 20 minutes of that, we drive back to the office, I drop her off, and I go home. What the heck? Story 10. I worked at an Eddie Bauer in the mall one summer in high school. Just working the floor, helping customers, keeping the displays stocked and tidy. Normal stuff. A guy comes in and starts rifling through the cargo shorts, getting visibly flustered the longer he goes on. I, being the attentive worker that I was, ask him if I can help him with anything. This was 18 years ago, and I remember this almost verbatim. I'm going to use the language that he used for full shock effect. Yeah, don't you guys carry any freaking normal shorts? Not these ones with all these dang pockets. You know why they're used for it, right? It's for all those black kids in the city who keep their drugs in. They keep their drugs in this pocket, points to the lower pocket. And they have their hand in this pocket, points up to the regular pocket. And they're messing around. Yeah, those black kids stand on the street corner with their drugs and they're messing off. 17-year-old me was dumbfounded. Uh, the regular khaki shorts are back this way. That sounds like the kind of guy to wear cargo shorts, huh? Story 11. Countless times at the go-kart place, summer job, where I work, I've had to put up with special needs kids whose caretakers or parents dropped them off and drove off because they wanted a break from them. These kids and adults have a mental age of anywhere between 3 to 15, and many times they are unable to follow the directions that we provide or even listen to us. They are not only a danger to themselves, but to the other riders, and to us the staff. An easy solution to this would be for their parents to ride with them in a double and to drive for them, allowing them to have fun without having to put anyone in danger. However, that costs more money and they don't want to. One parent even said, why can't you just ride with him? And when asked if she would be comfortable with other people, she said he wasn't. I wanted to call her a crappy parent, but I didn't want to lose my job. We can't deny them as they have the physical age to ride, but are hopefully putting rules in place to require parents of children with special needs to ride with their parents. I feel like if you're going to be a bad parent, there's better places to drop a kid off than the freaking racetrack. Story 12. I work in security, and a bit under a year ago, I worked at some kind of public TV event. My job was to keep people without passes out of a specific area, which was intended for those working behind the scenes to kick back and relax and get their lunches and all that. Anyway, only ones I was allowed entrance were people with passes and other security folks. But then word from above came that the exception was to be made for some kind of supposedly famous child music group. I had no clue what they looked like, so four kids and their parents walk up and I stop them. Don't you know who these are? Quickly followed. Eventually it got cleared up. And every time after, they kept bringing in more friends and family members and the same song and dance continued. Ugh. Story 13. When I worked at McDonald's, I found out we didn't get paid for closing. We got paid until the store closed. So if it took us an extra hour or two to close, that was unpaid. I wish I knew what I know now because that is an open and shut case. But at the time, I was young and dumb. My first paycheck, I noticed I had a ton of missing hours. So when I asked my boss about it, she told me we only get paid until the store closed. So that night, I walked out when the store closed. They tried to guilt me into staying because the other team members need me. Screw that. I don't work for free. Sorry. Especially when I'm already making minimum wage. No thanks. Not gonna happen. I think you should be allowed to leave as soon as the ice cream machine stops working. So, always. Story 14. A few years into my flying career, 
definitely not earning what people think pilots earn, I was asked to take a bunch of handicapped children and their carers for a 10 minute flight in a small twin prop aircraft. All seemed to be going well until after landing, when I smelt the unmistakable stench of vomit. I looked around, and all the passengers were looking horrified, as the inside of the plane had been covered in what, I was told, used to be strawberry milkshake. I then had to vacuum and wash down the carpet in the plane. The vacuum died after picking up a large amount of this lumpy white substance, and it started to drip back down the nozzle. It was a warm day, and that didn't make the smell any better. I mentioned the handicap thing not because I'm an awful person, but because his learning disability meant he didn't think to inform his carer of his nausea, so there was no attempt to reach for the sick bag. Oh, I think I'm gonna... Story 15. I was being sent all over the province to give leaflets to people. We're talking about an average of four hours of travel and three or four different bus and trains per day to get there and back home. I tried to tell my boss if they could just tell me where I wasn't supposed to go because we'd already left leaflets there, but they insisted I just kept going to that specific part of the province and said they were going to keep sending me there and further north, which meant that I was going to spend even more time per day traveling. To walk for hours and hours for 300 euro and 50 cents per correctly delivered leaflet, I called them and said, look, this isn't going to cut it. I'm not going to waste your time. I quit. They told me, well, you're going to travel for hours anyway, but I quit nonetheless. I now travel a grand total of 20 minutes of train per day. Who's traveling for hours now, suckers? Story 16. When I saw how disingenuous the pricing system and upselling tactics encouraged by the boss were, when customers' faces fell when they realized how much their final bill was, on top already having paid the not insignificant package price of the service up front, and how cheated they felt. When we were told to not place too much importance on getting customers to come back because our service wasn't something people get done regularly, in defense of their prices. When the boss set up part of the store three years ago for retail but never considered inventory management, and my manager got mad at me for trying to make an inventory list even though I was asked to do by someone at the head office and the warehouse was a mess of unsold goods gathering dust. When I was told I had shifts at another branch about two hours away, despite it never being mentioned in the job ad or during the interview, and finding out I had to pay for parking even as an employee, when I was bullied to tears, when coworkers told me everyone's got a story of the boss bullying them to tears, when I realized it didn't matter if the job was almost everything I'd wished for or if I felt like a crappy person at the end of the day. Also, I was being paid just above minimum wage for work spanning a few unrelated skill sets, so screw that. Story 17. Psycho camp director lost her crap on all of the lifeguards because we said we weren't coming back next summer. Reality was, we all had legit reasons. I was going to take summer courses to graduate early. Another guard was moving to university and was going to work in that city. Another guard got offered a head guard spot at a camp near her house, etc. Nothing that said we hated the current camp, just other things going on. We were told in a group meeting if we weren't happy there, we could leave and she would find other guards. Following Friday, she calls us all in to tell us what a great job we are doing and how happy everyone is going to the lake. Tuesday after that, she calls us in individually to tell us we aren't working hard enough and she sees us slacking off all the time. Lunchtime Tuesday, all the guards walked into her office, told her to go screw off in front of the owner of the camp, and we all piled into my Ford Focus and went for beer. Went home that night to find a message from the camp owner asking us to give him a call back. We all chatted and realized he had called all of us. Called him the following day, told him what went down. He asked us to reconsider and then he would give us a $5 an hour raise and report directly to him. We discussed it and agreed on the condition that the psycho director would have to apologize to us at a collective staff meeting. She refused and had a tantrum. Camp owner fired her on the spot, escorted her off the property, and we opened the lake back up. Screw you, Barb. So they got in trouble for not working hard enough, but isn't the main job of a lifeguard to just make sure nobody drowns? I feel like they were doing an alright job. Story 18. Was working at a checkout during a hot Australian summer. Can't remember the exact temperature, maybe around 40 plus degrees Celsius? A few years back, and store policy meant we had to wear long pants regardless of the weather. I was maybe 15, so was super cheap labor and had long hours. Almost fainted at one point. I was super small for my age and had loads of people buying bulk soft drinks and putting them on the conveyor instead of keeping them in the trolley, so I had to deal with lifting all that heavy stuff. I didn't know how to lift without injuring my back. I got another 10 minute break when the customer warned my supervisor after seeing me almost black out. Then I was back at it. Sucked. Also, I was told to quit while I could from an ex-employee. I should have done that sooner. Crikey, if there's one lesson I got out of that is to lift with my legs. 
Story 19. Weird one and not horrible, but made me just want to go freaking puke. I was the cashier. Old guy, probably a doctor, snaps at me when I happily share the amount he owes. He fiddles with his cards, then cash, then cards, then finally hands me two 20s. 1683 change. Fine, I count it out and hand it to him gently so as to not drop the cash change in the receipt. After, he stands there and says, I want to ask you a question. Do they train you to handle change that way? I'd handed him the bills, receipt, then change, all the while making sure he had it in hand properly and politely. I said I never even thought of it before. It's pretty much common courtesy. He said, Well, in my logical mind, it's change first, then bills, then receipt. You know, the weight of it. I said, Cool, I'm mindful of that. Good idea. He then wants to shake my hand. He gives me the death grip, squeezing my hand as hard as possible. I reciprocate. Nicely. Pop goes his pinky knuckle. He lets go, mortified, and marches out of the store. I think I broke the doctor's pinky knuckle, and now I'm wondering if I, or the store, or both, will get sued. Some stuff costs an arm and a leg. Some stuff just costs a pinky knuckle. Story 20. When I was working as a cashier at Borders, I threw my back out one day. I was in a lot of pain, and there was only one position I could be in that didn't cause me pain. I had been working there for like five months at that point, and had never taken a day off. So I figured it was about time, and I called in to let them know I wouldn't be coming in the next day because I hurt my back and was going to see a doctor. My manager's response was, Can't you just take a couple of Tylenol and come in anyway? We need you. Screw that. I was not going to come in and be miserable in pain at that job. So I said no and reminded her it was my first day off. Her response to that was that she was disappointed because she thought I was a team player. Story 21. I worked for the university's horse barn as a teenager. They had some pretty strict rules that I was not used to at other places. Like the horses were only allowed outside for two hours, no matter what. Could be the most beautiful day and we would have to stop everything we were doing to bring them into their stalls. They were only ever allowed two squirts of fly spray, which didn't cover their butts. Required to have their halters on 24-7, even when in the stalls at night. Our boss had clearly zero experience with animals. Or if he did, he just didn't care. One day, while one of the horses was having his feet trimmed, my boss went to pull out a weed whacker from the bottom of the shelf directly next to where the horse was standing. A lot like Jenga, the entire closet of machinery fell onto the horse, causing him to kick the farrier and run. Ever since that incident, the horse was a mess. So instead of hiring a trainer to fix the problem, they just locked him in the stall. All day, 24-7. I quit shortly after that. I still wonder how that horse is doing. Poor guy. Why the long face? Story 22. I used to work as a help desk contractor at a nuclear power company in Pennsylvania. We were phone support, and our job tended to have a lot of downtime. One day, my boss comes in and tells everybody they can no longer browse the web at work. The customer is always watching, and we need to always be focused on the job. Uh, okay, fair enough. A few days later, Hey, we noticed that you guys have started to bring in books because you can't browse the web anymore. Given books are a form of entertainment, we can't have people reading at work while waiting on a call to come in. No more books. Cut to next week. Guys, unless you're talking about work tickets, we can't have people chatting with one another. The customer sees this, and it makes it look like we're just sitting around chatting and not doing our job. So please try not to talk to your coworkers unless it's related to the job. The next day, she comes in and tells us we're not allowed to use our phones at work either. At this point, everybody has had enough and people start to rebel. We end up turning off our monitors and staring at blank screens while waiting for calls to come in. The customer can clearly see this. When a call comes in, we turn the monitors back on, do the job, hang up, and then shut them down again. We've been instructed to sit and wait for calls like a good boy and nothing else. Management ultimately reversed this bullcrap policy after about two weeks because it apparently looked creepy from the outside looking in. Well, yeah, that was kind of the point. If we're going to be treated like robots, we'll work like them. Almost a third of the team ended up walking for another job shortly after they did this. Attention, everybody, I just want to let you know you're not waiting as professionally as we would like you to. Story 23. I work in retail at a shoe store, so my job is already so low pain, but I do my job well, and my manager loves me for good reasons. Two of my coworkers and I are behind the counter, just hanging because there aren't any customers in the store. This guy walks into the store and straight to the counter, points at me, and demands that I help him. So I do. I'm a little annoyed, but I'm still very retail nice to him. He threw shoes around when they didn't fit him right. He made me fill out his order again because I didn't capitalize the first letters of his name, which made him go on a rant about the origin of his name and heritage. He lectured me for not asking for his name when he walked through the door. He felt very entitled and was really condescending about everything. But I gritted my teeth, smiled, and even laughed at his jokes. 
The next time he came into the store, he finds help from another coworker and complained to her about me, deliberately lying about the whole experience. He claimed I yelled at him the whole time and tells her she shouldn't be in this business if that's how she's going to act. Yeah, dude, because selling shoes is so my passion. I get paid enough to help people buy shoes, not to kiss their feet. Story 24. Working at Olive Garden as a hostess, we had to check the bathrooms to make sure they have soap and paper towels. In the men's restroom, someone tried to flush a baby diaper in the handicap stall's toilet. That stall has a trash can meant for baby diapers, so I don't know why the F anyone would try to flush it instead. Told the manager what happened, and she said one of us hostesses would have to put a bag over our arm and pull it out of the toilet. I refused and said I would rather be written up. I have more self-respect than that. One of the other hostesses ended up doing it and found out it wasn't a baby diaper, but instead a giant pad, like for women's periods. In the men's room? Whatever. I don't judge. Just throw it away instead of flushing it. It was so gross. Edit. I'm essentially copy and pasting a previous reply I made that clarifies I don't think less of people who clean up gross things. I was working at a restaurant for about minimum wage, and I agreed upon hiring to be a hostess, where I would be helping customers and occasionally serving food if the waitresses were super busy. Not shoving my whole arm in a clogged toilet to retrieve a poopy diaper or bloody pad. If I was okay with being a janitor, I would have applied to be one. I'm fine with adding soap or paper towels, but cleaning up human waste is my... I don't get paid enough for this moment. Some people are fine with it, but I honestly couldn't do it. I wouldn't do something I'm not super comfortable with and super grossed out by just to make my boss happy. Thus the, I have more self-respect than that, comment. Not saying that people who clean up gross things have no self-respect. Just my personal lines were being crossed and I have to know when to say no as an employee. I mean, that doesn't sound that bad, really. I've left way worse than a pad or a poopy diaper in the toilet. You know what I'm saying? So much fiber. Story 25. So many at my old job. Here's a couple. Having to explain to a coworker how the comment he made was racist and upset one of our students. Being told that people don't do work because they know I'll step in and do it to make sure it gets done. As manager, that was my job. Spending five to six hours cleaning up everyone else's mess before starting my own work. Telling the PhDs I was working with how to do simple things. But my biggest one was just before I left. I typed up the ad for my replacement. I included only about three quarters of my actual duties. HR kicked it back and said as written, the person performing those duties was mandated a salary of low six figures. I was making 30k. Story 26. I say this a lot as I work in a preschool slash daycare setting. Most recently, it was a day where I got five new kids, three behavioral students kept fighting and hitting and spitting, yelling a girl pooped herself, and when I went to clean her up, there was poop all over the toilet. I clean up everything, then when I got done, I walk out and clean up and start getting lunch ready, and a kid threw up all over the table. It's fun trying to keep 18 kids away from a table full of puke so I can clean it while also keeping them from beating each other up, running around the room, etc., while also trying to keep their lunch schedule. This was a day full of no and hitting me, messes, and bodily fluids. This is almost daily for me. But that day, I wanted to quit and said it multiple times. I work 10 to 10 and a half hour days and don't even make 15. Teachers are really underpaid, especially in early education. Yeah, that's a tough job where I can't foresee me thinking, I'm helping the future generation while cleaning up a lot of poop and puke and other things. Ew. Story 27. I got called at home after work to pick up a drunk naked female co-worker off the bathroom floor in our office after a happy hour. The co-worker that called me was a male and didn't want to touch her after she undressed and blacked out. I live close to the office, so he called me. By the way, I suffer from depression and PTSD due to the abuse from my alcoholic family members. I'm also an addict. Three years sober. This person has done some major crap here in our company already before this incident. She was not even slightly reprimanded after this. I blame the managers at our company who hired her and let her be a brilliant jerk. I was not even thanked properly and was told it's my job. I'm looking for a new job now. Interview on Friday. Wish me luck. Story 28. My first job didn't have a garbage compactor, so they chose me to jump into the recyclables dumpster and just kind of jump around to flatten discarded boxes. Why was I chosen? I was the fattest member on the team, so I was naturally qualified for the job. All for $5.25 an hour. The dumpster was located between the store and the parking lot. Everyone walking to the shop could see me. Customers looked down on me. Back in the store, people would back up when I got close because they thought I was rooting around in the garbage. It was just cardboard, but they acted like it was the plague. One day, my mom pulled up to the shop, saw me in the dumpster, and looked like she was going to cry because she was so embarrassed for me. After my mom, I just kind of quit. 
was one thing to have customers act like I was some garbage-dwelling monster, but to see my mom like that, that broke my heart. Turns out, the rest of the people working there were the real garbage. Burn! Story 29. Was making $2 above minimum wage for a furniture rental store. I was supposed to be a manager in training, but they screwed me and made me the jack-of-all-trades. One day they asked me to help out on repo runs and get back furniture from people that didn't pay. First red flag was going into an area and taking away a fridge from a family and watching them take all their food out for their kids and getting friends to keep it cold. The nail in the coffin, though, was going to someone's house at 10 p.m. at night, waking up the family, going into the bedroom of a sleeping child to wake him up so we can take away his bed as his parents didn't pay for it. As someone with young children at the time, I was disgusted in what I was doing. I was putting in 18-hour days doing these repossessions. I asked my district manager what I would be getting as compensation as I've had to do some very terrible things. She promised I would be well compensated for saving the company a ton of money and product. I got a $15 gift card to buy alcohol. I don't even drink. Maybe you should let them repossess that job opening. You, wait, does that make sense? You should, you should quit. Story 30. I was doing a three to four person job myself, plus at least half of my manager's work. It was almost Christmas, and both my grandfather and my husband's grandmother were very ill. Grandmother was in hospice care, and grandfather was in the hospital ICU, and family was debating whether or not to stop treatment and place him in the hospice as well. I gave my manager a heads up that I may need to leave work early, even though it was our mandatory work Christmas party that day. Grandfather started to respond to medication at the last minute, and I ended up not having to leave, but it was stressful pretending to be festive. The next day, I was pulled into the director's office, and I was berated for having a terrible attitude and was called nasty, and told, people physically recoiled from you because you're so unpleasant to be around. My manager sat there and said nothing, even though she knew I had two potentially dying family members and was trying to hold it together. I found out the manager complained about me to the director because she was worried I would take bereavement and she would actually have to do her job for once. She was also upset that I didn't volunteer to run the holiday party festivities. I started sending out resumes the next day and was gone to a better position four months later. Before I left, I did not fill out my employee engagement survey so they wouldn't get a 100% participation bonus, and I gave them a low rating during my exit interview. I didn't know people could get in trouble for not partying hard enough. Story 31 When my jerk of a manager yelled at me for some crap I didn't do and then told me I deserve to be treated like an adult when I do my job right and then told me she can do my job better than I can. She's a pencil pusher, and my work was cleaning cars in the summer outside. It was freaking hot, and we use a pressure washer, so lots of water, so also humid. So I got a nice view of her giving me a dirty look as she did my job when I was driving off the lots after I told her I quit. A few weeks of not being paid while I search for a job, as a young dude who still lives with his parents, is absolutely worth it in every way. That's right, get behind the wheel wells! Story 32. This is kinda a karma story. Once when I was working at Walmart, I had to place the shopping carts in the parking lot. I saw a lady walking towards the empty shopping cart bin and screamed, I NEED A SHOPPING CART! So I got her one, and without a thank you, rolled her eyes and walked into the store. Thinking this was over, carried on with my job. The lady walks out with a cake, a huge cart for a cake. It wasn't even a big cake. It was a tiny cake for her three-year-old's birthday. She starts muttering about stupid teens to a person on her phone, even though I had a job. Then, as she was packing her cake in the trunk, the most wonderful thing happened. She was holding her phone in one hand, cake in the other, and she slipped, broke her phone, and got cake all in her face, shirt, and pants. They were expensive. It was Gucci. It took everything to not laugh. And she yells, Get me another cake now! I shrug and carry on working. I don't get paid enough to deal with that crap. This story still makes me laugh to this day. By the way, I worked at Walmart to help pay for my college fees. Well, it turns out you can have your cake and eat it too. You might break your phone in the process, but you know what? It's all the same. Story 33. Working on an ambulance, roll up on some dude. I can't remember what his complaint was, but it wasn't medical at all. The way he was acting, it was obvious he had mental problems, but not so that he was a danger to himself or anyone else. Spent like an hour with him in the back of the truck, trying to get him to explain his minor inconvenience. But all he did was yell at me and tell me we needed to go to the hospital, and he'd tell me on the way. It was also less than five minutes away, so I don't know what kind of time he thought he'd had to explain. Anyway, he keeps getting up, opening the back door, and shouting to the neighborhood that we weren't helping him, so I finally turned to my partner in the front seat. Hey man, when I give you the signal, 
drive away. Patient once again opens the back door. I boot his butt out and off we go. Thug life. That guy met the first and last responders. I work the register at a Chinese restaurant in a pretty sketchy plaza. I've only been working here for about a week. Two days ago, a man walks in with a woman by his side, and when they got to the counter, he gives me a weird look and starts laughing, and he says, You're not a Ching Ching. I ain't gonna order from your white butt. Get me a... Story 35. I used to work at a Michael's in a rich neighborhood as a cashier, so a lot of customers were essentially a 35-year-old divorced white Pinterest mom type with more money than sense. Lots of scrapbooking materials getting sold. That kind of thing. On one of the last days of my time there, a customer came through a co-worker's line to purchase a single Sharpie, which is about $1.50 or so. Co-workers asks if she wants to keep the receipt, and she says no, we can throw it away. So she does. Customer leaves, all is well, right? Not quite. The customer comes back about 5 to 10 minutes later in my line this time, claiming that the Sharpie isn't dark enough for whatever project she's doing, and she wants a full cash refund. I tell her that we can't do that without the receipt, which she asked us to throw away, and that she could get a partial credit on a store card. She flips out and demands a full refund over a single Sharpie. A single $1.50 Sharpie. I'm just sort of at a loss and call over a supervisor to take care of it. And even though the supervisor is essentially telling her what I told her, she is boiling. She wanted that $1.50 and gosh dang it, she wanted it now. Fortunately, later that week, I was approached by my current boss for a job opportunity closer to what I wanted to do in life. And I pieced the freak out of Michaels pretty fast. I'm no Sharpie expert, but can't you pull it out in the store to test it? Story 36. I used to work at a pretty big clothes store with a massive three-story stock room. This place was huge, and it wasn't uncommon to see rats. So we laid out poison for the rats and didn't see any more. Fast forward a few days, I'm walking down the stairs and almost stepped on this giant half-dead rat that's convulsing on the staircase. Legged it back up the stairs and grabbed the boss. Me. Yeah, we have a dying rat on the stock room stairs. What should we do with it? Boss. Looks left and right, pulls a fork out of his pocket. Go finish it off. And dump it round back. Me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Funny. Boss. Continues to look straight at me, unblinkingly. Watch the fork when you're done and put it back in the break room. Oh, fork that job. Story 37. Maybe I'm a jerk. I don't know. I've been a network engineer and IT consultant for the better part of 20 years. I was hired on as a consultant for a prestigious architectural firm to get their infrastructure whipped into shape. They had some antiquated hardware running to support some very bad habits surrounding email and file sharing on their network. It was a job I was working at several days a week for a couple years. One of the partners kept asking me to fix his email. He kept every email in his inbox rather than archiving or deleting what he didn't need or even moving into separate folders. So fix for him meant going to his inbox and manually dragging a year's worth of emails somewhere they wouldn't totally slow down his outlook. So after doing this a few times for him, I sat with him and showed him how to do this himself. It doesn't take a huge amount of time to drag and drop, but this just some time to wait for everything to get moved. A few months later, he sends me an email to come fix his emails again. I replied that I was busy doing something with the network and he could do it himself just like I showed him previously. That day, I was fired and asked not to return. I'd say respond to him by email back, but you know what? He probably won't be able to find it in that mess of an inbox. <laughs> Tech joke. Was it? I don't know really. Story 38. I was working at a movie theater for minimum wage, which I think was $5 an hour at the time. One day while I was working concession, meaning I was handling people's food that day, I went on my break, went to the bathroom real quick and found the most disgusting explosion of crap I have ever seen in my life. The crime scene involved two stalls. Yes, two. There was crap on the toilet, around the toilet, it was on the walls, it was on the floor, it was everywhere. But even more baffling, one stall was locked meaning whoever caused this had to crawl underneath one of the stalls to the next one over to continue their carnage, however they caused it. To this day, it was one of the most disgusting yet most confusing things I have ever seen in my life. I went to my boss and notified them. He had people that day who were designated for the bathrooms, but in hindsight, he didn't delegate the task to them. Instead, he asked them, Want to clean this up? Of course, all of them were like, Heck no! I'm a manager now, and I know this manager was weak to even ask instead of delegate. One of them kept saying, I don't handle crap. So he designated that task to me. Well, you reported it, so you clean it, was basically how this went. No instructions were given to me, no out-of-order signs, no disinfectant, nothing. I was just given a mop with some hot water. I cleaned up what I could, which was essentially not much considering the situation. I then washed my hands in the hottest water I could, 
before going back to serving your popcorn and fried chicken and soda. I'm honestly baffled today that they didn't have a procedure in place for this sort of thing. Like I would think there would be some sort of serious violations here. If no one's gonna say it, then I will. He was handing out poop corn. <laughs> okay, bye. Story 39. Worked in a dementia center slash retirement home. Got a new co-worker who didn't really work at all. Let's call him Mike. He started a lot of crap and got two of my other co-workers to take some time off work whilst being depressed. We had many group therapy sessions. Didn't really help. I just told myself I deserve better and I do not get paid nearly enough to deal with all this crap. Finally, two weeks before I decided to quit, I swapped working schedules with a co-worker that worked like 90% of her shifts with Mike. I basically terrorized him in every way possible whilst making sure I did my work the best way possible. Then I quit. Told him I hope I never see him again. Now I'm close to finishing my university studies and I will never look back at that place again. Story 40 Worked at a Kmart as a cashier for a year and twice I got the dubious honor of cleaning up human excrement. The first time someone dropped a log in the middle of the floor of the woman's bathroom. Being a guy, I had to wait until the bathroom was unoccupied, but even with me standing there with a mop and a bucket and the door propped open and a sign in front of the door and me literally telling people, there was poop on the floor, don't go in, I still had to wait a half an hour for people to stop using the dang bathroom. Someone came in while I was in the middle of cleaning it up even. The second time, and the one that really made me go, you don't get paid enough for this, was when this old man decided to just paint a bathroom stall with his poop. Like, full-on smeared it all over the walls and the toilet, trying to make everything brown. Then he didn't bother to wash and left crappy handprints over everything he touched and tracked poop on the floor all the way to the food court, leaving a nice smear of poop where he sat. I think he had Alzheimer's or dementia because someone came to collect him at the food court later. Unfortunately, I was young and didn't know this kind of thing really should not be handled by a 16-year-old kid with a mop and some gloves. But I knew enough to tell the managers that there was no way in heck I was going to clean up something like that again. That guy must have lived a full life when he was younger. Maybe a rock star singing such hits as I see a bathroom stall and I want it painted brown. Story 41. I once worked for a company that specialized in the care for developmentally disabled people as a direct service provider, but were often called staff. I worked in ISLs, or commonly seen as a group home. I was paid $9 hourly working, 12-hour shifts on the weekends, sometimes longer. The first house I ever worked in had four people. Two of them were in diapers, couldn't speak, and had the intelligence of toddlers. The other two needed moderate support. My co-worker was sick, so I had replacement, PRN, working with me. One of the non-speaking residents had a diarrhea blowout. They got up out of the bed, down the hallway, across the room, into the kitchen, leaving a long, clumpy trail of human waste behind them. What naturally happened? My co-worker hid in a reclining chair under a blanket in the living room while I had to coax a screaming adult toddler into their sit-in shower, constantly redirect the other residents away as they want my attention every two seconds, all while I'm bleaching and wiping up clumps of human feces off the hardwood floor throughout the entire house. It stank particularly bad that day too. My coworker did not help. She did nothing as I had to clean the house, bathe the resident who had the blowout, and then cook them lunch. Looking back on it, I should have forced her to help me, never making that mistake again. Seems like a lot of these jobs should come with nose plugs. Story 42. Was working retail at a shop that treats its staff like absolute garbage. The stuff I had to endure there was absolutely mind-boggling. But I couldn't walk out because I needed the money. No longer there, finally. Some of my most, I'm not paid enough for this crap, moments were being forced to clean out the bathroom trash can after someone literally took a crap in it because I was the store manager at the time and every other member of the team refused to do it. One of them knew about it and didn't tell me for two full days. Being told to try and fix a toilet clog with nothing but two plastic knives and a bucket because I was alone in the store and the owner didn't want to just buy a plunger and bring it in. The clog had to be fixed because there was only one bathroom shared by employees and customers. This happened three times before one of the store employees finally bought and brought in a plunger. Being made to scrub the wooden floor that covered the entire store interior on my hands and knees because it had snowed and people had tracked salt everywhere. The store owner felt that rucks to prevent this would look tacky, but he also thought that mopping a wood floor covered in salt with regular mopping solution would eliminate all the white salt streaks. I had to scrub the whole thing with white vinegar and water and one small microfiber rag to get all the streaks out. During store hours, in my work clothes, I requested multiple times that staff be allowed to clock in or be scheduled 30 minutes before opening to do necessary cleaning, and was told, absolutely not. If the store opened at 10 a.m., employee shifts started at 10 a.m. 
And yet, employees were expected to dust, mop, and otherwise clean the store at opening, even if there were customers. Once, I clocked in 7 to 10 minutes early, one or two times during the same week, and received a text saying if it ever happened again, I would be terminated. However, we were told it was acceptable to show up early and do necessary cleaning without clocking in, but we were expected to open the store and help any customers who saw someone inside, even if it were prior to our official opening time. Still, without clocking in. Story 43. Worked a summer doing hardwood floors for a guy that would run through all the workers, but I needed the job, so I endured. Bad breath, overmanaging, you name it, the guy sucked. The last straw broke me one day when we were sanding floors in a very elderly lady's apartment who had recently passed away. This apartment is in an area for subsidized housing, and most of the apartments were not taken care of or checked on. And this one in particular, the lady lived in alone for the past 25 or so years. Long story short, this poor old lady would pee all over her house. Every room, huge black stains from pee without fail. I thought it was bad when I first saw it, but as my boss was on the fence if we were even going to do the job, we followed through. Come to find out, sanding old pee just gets rid of the top layer, opening up a brand new fragrance of fresh 20-year-old urine. I don't even have the words to describe the foulness. I can put up with a lot of crap, apparently not pee though, but that's the day I realized I'd rather be broke all summer than another day with that job. Story 44 16 year old working at Target, was making 8 bucks an hour to stock shelves. Someone comes out of the men's room and goes up to a manager and says there's a mess in the men's room that needs to be cleaned up. People responsible for that were on break and the manager didn't want to do it, so she asked me to do it since I happened to be the closest to her at the time. Walked in the room and someone had taken an entire crap on the floor, looked at it, looked at myself in the mirror, walked out of there and looked at my manager and literally said, I don't get paid enough for that, and went back to doing my normal job. Somehow didn't get fired and someone else ended up cleaning the bathroom. What an absolute baller. Story 45. Literally just happened. I work for a digital marketing firm that's just special. My brother nearly drank himself to death earlier this year. Had to go through major surgeries to restore his health. He wasn't in great shape before the alcohol. Well, two months out from his last surgery and his red blood cell count is down. Doctors inform us they suspect it's either internal bleeding or perhaps some form of leukemia. I think it was. Not sure. Basically, his body might have just stopped replacing red blood cells at a survivable rate. Knowing my company has a crap PTO system, three days sick pay a year, four hours of PTO per pay period, and that we've been both firing and having people quit left and right, I opted to do a conference call with my parents when they discuss what's going on with my brother, with the surgeon who wrapped up surgery this morning. Heck, for all I know, if I called out, they would terminate me because I have no PTO to use to cover that time. Only time that works for the surgeon is 10-ish, right when we have a departmental meeting. I informed my director I'll be a smidge late, explained the situation, and got a snippy email back saying, Let me get this clear. You will be taking your lunch break when our meeting starts so you can take a personal phone call? He CC'd our HR director too. Screw that. Story 46. I did door-to-door -door sales for a few days. Was promised it would be easy money and I'm a fool for having believed that. I never made a single sale. In the five or so days I worked there, I was actually losing money because I had to drive back and forth every day. I was already considering quitting after my supervisor watched me try to make a sale, make a big mistake, and then not point it out until after everyone realized I messed up and I lost the sale. I figured if the boss is stupid enough to let crap like that happen, maybe this isn't the best place for me. The next day, someone called the police on me and another one of the salesmen and we were stopped. Cop asked what we were doing and I let the other guy talk since he'd been doing this longer. Seemed like he knew what he was doing. The cop asked if we had permits and the guy told him we didn't, at which point I knew I was done here. Officer told us that we needed a solicitation permit or whatever in this town and that he would let us go, but if he saw us again, we'd be arrested. The guy tried to tell me that it's no big deal. They'll pay for your bail and any fees, but it didn't matter. No way I was going to get arrested doing a job that I wasn't even getting paid for. I quit the next day. The spineless cockroach of a boss wouldn't even talk to me and had me talk to his second in command. Talk about a hard sell of a job. Story 47. EMT at an ER. Had an individual who hadn't bathed, done laundry, or bothered to clean up after their cats for four months. Had a yeast infection in their groin about 12 inches in diameter and had cat crap matted in their long hair, in every crevice on their skin, under their fingernails, and encrusting their clothes. I was initially told to just wash their hands and feet to help with the smell. That wasn't my breaking point though. My orders got upgraded to giving them a bed bath and they sent a nurse to help me. And that still wasn't my breaking point. Sure, I was upset, but the point where I almost dropped everything and quit was when this individual sighs and goes, this is so nice, it's like being at the spa. I didn't walk out. 
but I almost did. I did not get paid enough for that, and I did not get my EMT license to give nasty people bed baths. I know it's a good thing to do, but... Oh, that's so gross. Story 48. Working at IHOP currently, and it's almost nightly now. I do weeknights, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., and the skeleton crew consists of myself, the server, and my manager, who spends most of the night locked in the back of house cooking since there is no cook. Manager does the cooking while I do everything for the front of the house. We have no hostess to seat you. I do that. We have no combo busser to clean your table. I do that. There is no bartender to mix your stupid virgin drinks. I do that. There is also no way for me or my boss to call in other employees if we're too busy. There are a total of 45 tables in our restaurant. At least once a week, I end up using all of them and spending two hours after my shift is over getting the tables flipped for morning crew. And trust me, the tips reflect just how busy I am. Since it's only me doing refills, running food to tables, answering the phone, making drinks, taking orders, seating people, and turning tables, I have to price prioritize the first thing to go is busing, and after that are refills. On my average busy night, I am lucky to have 35 bucks to take home. On a well-paced night, I do between 50 to 100. Why do I have to bust my butt for 213 an hour for people to get mediocre, rushed service that isn't worth tipping and won't earn me tips? Why can't my employer afford, at a minimum, an extra 213 an hour all night and have two servers? Why does my job have to boil down to? It doesn't matter how good or bad a server I am, it's about how well I can convince you that I am so bad off that I need your money more than you. I'm to the point I want to organize some sort of movement to boycott bad labor practices by taking advantage of these kinds of situations, because people walk out and I'm too busy to stop them to get them to pay. Just can't come up with a catchy statement or hashtag or whatever. How about, I hope, the International House of Prioritizing Employees? Story 49. Former HVAC installer. The worst day was when I had already spent 12 hours under a house with around a foot of clearance between the ground and the joist. Sometimes it was four or so inches, so I had to use a shovel to dig myself a path. We were tearing out a pretty large system and had to replace it. It was a downflow, so the ducts that went from the furnace slash AC to the vents were under the house. As an apprentice, I did the majority of crawling. This was during the rainy season, so there were also some really muddy spots, which were a nice break from the rocky ground under the rest of the house. So I knew there was a rat problem at some point because there were dead rats in a few places. After being dead for a while, they kind of looked like yellow cooked sweet potatoes with rat-like features. So anyway, I crawled through a stern wall, like a concrete wall from the ground to the floor, usually around the perimeter of the house, but they'll make holes when they renovate and add onto the house. My arm goes in and touches the bottom. The water was up to my shoulder with deep squishy mud at the bottom. I took a deep breath and went in, relieved for the three or so feet of space I now got to work with and not stoked for the two feet of water. I started crawling carefully, working my way in with the ducks to hook them up when my headlamp beam hit something as my head was sweeping. I looked, and my gaze fell on the bloated corpse of a rat floating on the water I was now almost completely immersed in. I looked around more, and found the corpses of six more rats, all in various states of decay. I took a deep breath, I was wearing a respirator, and went to work. I finished the three duck runs to that part of the house and got the heck out. I crawled all the way back to the access point, got outside, peeled my crawl suit off, hosed myself off with the garden hose, and took my supervisor up on a cigarette. After he left, I broke down a little bit. That's the only time in my adult life I've just lost it and cried. Thankfully, nobody else saw. And we finished the job. It taught me a few things. The human spirit is stronger than any of us think. And sometimes, hiking your pants up, taking a deep breath, and going for it is all you need. HVAC guys, plumbers, and to an extent, electricians, all deserve far more respect than they get. They work in incredibly austere and adverse environments every single day. HVAC is not for me. Ah, uh, you know, after reading this, I think I'm going to tip my HVAC guy next time he comes around. Story 50. Volunteered to be on the organizing staff for a small local convention. The boss was so incompetent, yet is a micromanager and also decides to call you up at random hours of the day to get you to do something. One time he called me up at 6 p.m. to tell me to get the website team to update the website. Thing of note here is the website was completely broken. It was scheduled to be fixed by the end of the week. Did I mention this was a volunteer job? As in no one is getting paid? This update to the website was meant to please the sponsors because we had to show that we had some relevance to our sponsors, which meant we needed new content. I told the guy that this would take 24 hours minimum. He told me I had till 12 that night or sponsors will pull their deal. That's six hours to write up content and to fix the entire website with a team of three people outside of reasonable business hours and no one was getting paid. Should have updated the website too. 
We're all done. Story 51. I work as a field engineer for a general contractor, and I had to go do an as-built on the 240-foot crane that was placed in between the building we're making. They needed the dimensions because some shoring was going to need to be made so that the crane wouldn't bump into the building and damage it. So I start climbing up there. Take in mind that while I was going to be on the crane, the crane was not going to stop working. Loads were still being done, and I had to go to the 10th floor of the building. That was the highest part of the building at the time, but the crane was way higher than that. So I have to tie myself off at the sides of the crane and pretty much be hanging off of it while taking down the dimensions of each corner of the crane and parallel side of the building. I ended up doing it anyways because I said to myself, it can't be that bad. But boy was I wrong. Story 52. Pretty much any day at work with my ridiculous boss. Went down to the IT department downstairs to have my laptop fixed and my supervisor under the boss text me asking where another coworker is because they can't get in contact with them. Tell them I'm downstairs in the IT department. So I wouldn't know. The coworker they are looking for comes down to check on me and make sure I'm actually there as if I would somehow make the whole thing up. Oh, then there's the time that my boss refused to believe the doctor's note I gave her for being sick, claiming that it was obviously forged. So I have my doctor call her up and she doesn't believe it, claiming it's my brother or something, even though the phone number on the caller ID is literally the exact same even though the phone number on the caller ID is literally the exact same as the one from my doctor's office that I found for her on Google to show her. There was also an issue with the phone system that prevented calling other branch offices. So when she was traveling in February, she would call my desk phone and be unable to get through and documented that on my monthly review. Never mentioned that there was a known issue with the phone system even though she knew that. And even though she had my phone number, never once called me to let me know there was an issue. She just wanted an excuse to pin that on me. You should call her up and tell her she's horrible and then say sorry, that was my brother. Story 53 Nothing dramatic like what I assume you're looking for, but for me, it was the workload and expectations. What started off as a 9 to 5 slowly turned into 8 to 6. It was never required I be there the additional 2 hours while salaried, but if I didn't stay those additional hours, I couldn't possibly manage the expected workload. In fact, nobody could. So not only would I fall behind if I didn't stay, but my co-workers in a small office would take notice if I wasn't staying late to keep caught up like them as well. It wouldn't have been an issue for me if this was a once every other week type of thing, but it became normal for my boss to call after 6 p.m. asking if I was still in the office, as if it were just expected, and to call or email me work-related things on my weekends and expect answers. It was dreadful, and I always felt like you were on call with no moments in your time off to just enjoy yourself. I quit alongside another co-worker after just a few months. My final straw was when my boss called me five times back to back while I was in the shower one Sunday morning. I was getting ready to meet up with some friends and my boss woke my whole house at 7 a.m. to make sure I had completed my work and was ready for a big Tuesday meeting. Work that was not only done, but that could have been followed up on a Monday morning even if it wasn't. Edit. I should add that this particular employer was notorious for giving you grief for the five things you didn't get done in a day as opposed to focusing on the 30 tasks you completed. They also tried team saving costs by paying everyone more than the industry standard, but they supported this by understaffing the place. Great pay, crap job, and expectations. Learn from that stint that making a few thousand more a year isn't worth it if you're already living within your means and happy with the job and people. A few thousand more sounds nice, but after taxes, you're only taking home about 30 bucks to 50 more a paycheck. Yeah, nah. Story 54. I was working the night shift. We got a call around midnight that a young pregnant female was trapped in her room and had barricaded herself in because her father was on a cocaine-filled rampage upstairs. On arrival, we just see this guy pacing back and forth, turning lights on and off upstairs. He then turned off the light, came to a window upstairs, and just stared down at us, smiling. Real creepy smile, too. The daughter ran out of the house, and we put her in a car. Turns out he had broken her phone and then tried to get into her with a metal bat. We went into the house and walked up the stairs, and when I got five steps down, down comes this six-foot, steroided-up, body-shaved, naked guy, as in fully naked, running at me. Needless to say, I took a few steps down, and we sprayed him with pepper spray. Didn't work on this guy who proceeded to kick my colleague. We got him to the ground, but the spray had affected both my colleagues, who then had to leave the house with no sight or ability to clear their eyes. So I was alone with our friend. I had to cuff him and get him dressed by myself while he tried to touch me with his now, for reasons I do not know, erect member. Putting on his trousers was a real issue. As he thrusted towards my face, I thought, I really don't get paid enough for this. I'm no scientist, but I wonder if a little pepper spray to the groin might have calmed that issue down a bit. Story 55. Ice cream scooper at a nice travel stop slash 
tourist attraction. On Sundays, per the owner's order, we didn't offer samples because of how busy it got, and oftentimes the line would stretch to the door because everyone wants to try all 25 plus ice creams before they can decide. A grown man comes up with his elderly mother. They both ask to try an ice cream. I apologize and give them the whole, I'm not allowed to per owner's orders talk. So they proceeded to ask to sample a different ice cream. I then have to explain that the no sample rule applies to all ice creams. I even explain why I'm not allowed to hand out samples. At this point, this grown man is irate, spewing BS about how the customer deserves to get what they want and they're always right. Blah, blah, blah. He then proceeds to get in my face and say, I should punch you right now spit in my face and everything. A manager is called up front, and after everything is said and done, I'm told to give him his samples. He looks so smug. Let's just say, I didn't work there for much longer. This customer sounds like he's got the brains of a guy that's trying to sample vanilla.